right. Hello and welcome everybody to the round eight worldwide toast in celebration of our most successful round of fundraising ever. It's amazing to see all of you here. Thanks so much for coming by. Uh, my name is Taylor Gledhill. I am the creative director for Legion M. Uh, you'll also probably remember me from many a moment from our Twitch pandemic days uh, yeah. where we had a ton of fun live streaming all throughout that, uh, that whole event. Um, you'll also know that uh, these streams uh, can always be full of fun gaffes and, uh, and mistakes. Uh, so we're going to do our best to give you the best show possible. We've got some amazing clips lined up from a lot of our collaborators and partners, uh, directors of some of the projects that we have in the works, talking about the cast. We're going to talk about the state of the Legion. We're going to talk about all of those upcoming projects and a bunch of other fun things. So uh, I'm going to pass it over to Paul Scanlon, our CEO, uh, who's going to take it from here. Go for it. Awesome. Thank you, Taylor, and welcome, everyone. Uh, we're really excited to be back on live with you all and getting out to events and uh, seeing you in person. And, you know, from the bottom of our hearts, we just want to thank you for all your support. And, you know, this toast that we're going to do today is as much to you all and your support of Legion M as, uh, as anything else. But as Taylor mentioned, we have a pretty full agenda. Um, we're hoping to try to get it done in an hour, but uh, if you've been to any of these in the past, that's kind of an ambitious, uh, ambitious task for, for this team because we love to talk about this company. Um, but we always start off with this legend here from our good friends at the SEC who like to remind you uh, of the risks of uh, investment. Um, but so just making sure you, that you've seen that. So Taylor gave a quick highlight on the agenda. We're gonna start off with the toast. So if you haven't already gotten yourself a glass of something refreshing to toast with, please grab that now. Uh, then we're gonna go into the state of the Legion. Uh, you're, we're gonna introduce you, you're gonna meet um, a, a lot of the team today. Uh, we really, you know, we, we want to include as many of the team as we can accommodate. Um, we're going to talk about the round eight uh, and give a quick recap. We'll go into some of the growth that we've experiencing, uh, but then also looking forward at, you know, what our future plans are. Uh, we'll give you a little glimpse into what's happening at San Diego Comic-Con, um, and then we'll give a merch and licensing update from uh, our very own Mandy Bartisbanian. And then Terry and David are going to walk us through some amazing project updates, including all the amazing projects that we've introduced in the last several weeks. And then if you're sticking around, we're gonna have the Valor Awards, the inconspicuous Valor Awards that, sh that we always try to give out to uh, those in the community that go above and beyond and really you know, exude the kind of Legion M uh, support and mentality that we so appreciate. And then we have Q&A, so we've already um, we've already gotten a lot of uh, submitted questions, so we're going to go through some of those. Um, but then if you have a question, feel free to throw it in the comments. Uh, we are streaming this live on YouTube, so if you're watching elsewhere, that's great too, because we're also simulcasting it elsewhere. Uh, but it's primarily going out to uh, YouTube. So with that, um, I would recommend we all grab our drinks. I've got mine. I'm uh, pouring a little Coppola Claret. I figured that was uh, apropos for the entertainment industry. It's a little early here in California, so you know I'm kind of breaking some rules drinking wine at four o'clock. <laughs> um, but I want to I, I want to make a toast, and then and then I want to open it up uh, to the team. You know we we are really excited about where Legion M is today. I mean we are six almost six six years in, and you know we're more excited than ever. I mean, we're still a startup, so we still have, you know, a long way to go, but we feel really good. Like, you know, and with your support, uh, we've accomplished a lot. And we're, you're going to hear from all of us where we talk about what we're most proud of, but also what we're most looking forward to. But right now, I want to toast to round eight, our biggest and fastest round yet, um, and including some of the quick highlights. William Shatner joined our advisory board. Nandor just wrapped filming in, in Leeds. Kit Harrington attached to Mary's Monster. Marvin Jones joins, uh, attaches to uh, to Defiant. 
We've got an incredible SDCC lined up, San Diego Comic-Con, and we've announced five new projects in the last several weeks, and we're not even done yet. We have more to come. So here's to round eight and your support and everything you do to make Legion M what it is today. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers. All right. So this is, <laughs> this is our team. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a quick overview of of the team. This includes all of our full time employees. It also includes some part time employees that are contributing, maybe just a, you know on a part time basis or maybe even a few hours a week, but are making valuable contributions to the company. And I want to start by uh, going around the horn. Maybe we'll start with you, Taylor. Uh, what are you most proud of and what are you most looking forward to? Yeah, um, well, let's see. I am honestly, it's it's interesting. I was thinking a lot about this question when you asked it earlier and I am, I'm most proud of the fact that like, you know, where the pandemic was really difficult on a lot of small businesses and a lot of startups and uh, especially in the entertainment industry, it was difficult with, you know, productions shutting down and um, all of those in-person events getting closed off. And I am really proud of the both both the, the staff and the sacrifices that the staff had to make during that time to get through it, but also really proud of the community, especially. Um, everybody watching now, everybody who watched all of those Twitch streams, you know, it's really personal to me. I think at one point during the height of the, the pandemic, I was doing like 15 or 20 hours of live streaming content, not even the prep. And just, you know, kind of getting to be a part of that and um, and everybody who tuned in for that, you know, whether it was, you know, five or 500 people, I think at one point we had like 90,000 people to show up for one because we got stuck on some homepage somewhere. Uh, it was it was really special. So uh, for me, I'm really proud of just that element and, uh, you know, really feeling fortunate to not only have that community, but also the fact that we, we did make it through that, you know, that really challenging time um, and are coming out the other side stronger. Um, I think what I'm most looking forward to are probably things like Nandor Fodor. If you've been watching any of the updates that we have, it's going to be hilarious. Uh, we've got a lot of really fun behind the scenes photos from that coming up uh, in this stream. Uh, that'll be a part of it. So um, that's what I'm most excited for, probably. And uh, Paul, you're, you're muted, but cheers to everybody. <laughs> Cheers. I'll talk to that. Cheers again. Cheers. <laughs> Jeff, you want to give a quick toast and let us know what you're most proud of? Sure, yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I want to point out that I'm, as a true entrepreneur, toasting with coffee rather than alcohol. <laughs> but um, uh, no, I there's so many things to be proud of. And I think for me, what I'm most proud of is, um, like, I feel like we've cleared the launch pad, to use like a rocket analogy, because, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I was vacationing in Orlando uh, last week, and we went to Kennedy Space Center. And and it, you know when you when you launch a rocket, it, you use a disproportionate amount of fuel and energy and effort just getting off the ground. Taking something from zero to something is the hardest part. And you know once you clear the launch tower, you've got velocity, you've got you've burned off fuel, so your load is lighter. And I feel like if you use the analogy in our case, uh, you know one of the best indicators is like the projects that are coming to us now when we started off this whole idea was new equity crowdfunding was new you know every conversation started with we're the world's first fan-owned entertainment company and this is what <laughs> that means and now we have people seeking us out and coming to us saying i've been following what you guys have been doing i love what legion m represents i've got this project is it something that you're interested in and the caliber of those projects just keeps getting larger and larger and so i'm just so proud out of everything that we've um, accomplished together. And I think what I'm most excited about and what I want to toast to is, you know, looking forward to is, you know, we have uh, over 35,000 investors. We are literally one of the largest equity crowdfunded companies in all of history and time because it's new and i mean it's new in the us it's been around longer in the uk but still thirty-five thousand puts us in the big leagues of the uk and everywhere in the world where equity crowdfunding exists and so you know to having having gotten there from something that was just a crazy idea 
Um, to me, what I'm most excited about is getting our next 35,000. So I want to toast to 70,000 shareholders. 70, it's, it's out there. We believe it's achievable. And I think that's the next great frontier for us. So I love cheers. It. cheers to that. Profit test. How you doing? You want to give us your, uh, what are you most proud of and what are you looking forward to? Absolutely. I'm, first of all, I'm super proud to be a part of this amazing team at Legion M. I'm so excited um, that we were able to take on diverse projects this year. And most importantly, I'm looking forward to finally attending my first Legion M movie premiere. When I started the company, all of the theaters were shut down. And so I'm excited about being able to get out there, meet the community, and more importantly, look at some great films. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Prophetess. Hey, Terry, how about you? Terry sure. Luberoff. Yes. Oh, Terry Luberoff. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Neither Terry. Um, I'll go. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm, I am most proud of how well our Legion M team works together, when, especially when we all have a common goal. You know, a lot of people don't understand we're a really small company. We have eight full-time employees and, you know, maybe two handfuls worth of contractors and part-time employees. And we operate like a company that has 30 or 40 people in it. Um, and I'm so proud at the level of just passion and excitement that we all come to work with every day. It, it, you know, they say, if you, if you're passionate about what you're doing, it never feels like a job. And I think that's true of Legion M for, for me. And I certainly feel that way about our team. Um, and the thing I'm most looking forward to is the growth of our development slate. We've, we've done a really good job growing that slate over the past uh, two years. We're gonna continue to do growth on that slate very, very aggressively. And the whole idea is to take bigger swings more often. Uh, so I'm super excited about that and can't wait to talk more uh, when we're at that part of the presentation. All right, cheers to that. If you love what you Yay! do, you work a day yeah. in your life. <laughs> Terry P, T2, why don't you go next? Yes, um, so I, Taylor kind of stole my answer, <laughs> um, but I will second what he said. My biggest thing was the fact that in the last two, two years ago, I had to step away from Legion M because I had to help with the pandemic a little bit. And so it was very difficult to every so often looking back and saying, are we going to survive? Are we going to survive? You know, please Legion M because it's a small company, right? Please survive. And I kept, I was a fly on the wall listening to all the chat on Slack and on, on the group text. And I was like, I kept hearing these awesome updates of, we were finally able to focus all of our energy on development. And, and I was like, oh my God, what, what are we, this is awesome. We came out of the gates strong when we, uh, after, the, after the last two years. And I'm so excited to get back into it. Like my, my world is now freed up a little bit more. And so, uh, this is this is an exciting time, and that's what I'm looking forward to is um, all these projects coming down the pike, and and us getting more involved in the earlier part of filmmaking, so that we can offer these awesome opportunities to our community now to be part of the process like we've always wanted to do. So those are the kind of things that I'm looking forward to, and they and they look like they're you know they're slowly happening more and more often. Well, we're all looking forward to you coming back, and thank you for ending the pandemic. Saving the world. Yeah. yeah thank welcome. you for taking care Single handedly, of Terry Pignon. Yeah, Single handedly. Terry Pignon. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Who do we got here? Uh, Mandy, you want to go next? Hi, everybody. Uh, I'll keep this short and sweet because I know we still have a lot to talk about. Uh, I am incredibly proud of so many things of this company, but one of the biggest things I'm proud of is the relationships and the partnerships that we've been able to cultivate since the very of, uh, of this company. And the, these partners that we work with, they absolutely love working with Legion M. And not only does that speak to, of course, the team um, and how amazing we all are together, uh, but also to the community and the mission of what Legion M is. Um, everyone believes in it. And, uh, and we continue to prove that time and time again, which is very, very beautiful. Uh, personally, I am incredibly excited about Nandor Fodor. I am uh, so stoked because it looks like an incredible movie. The cast is amazing. 
Um, the story is awesome. And I literally can't wait to put talking mongoose on t-shirts. That's going to be a blast for me. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. It. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, David, how about you? Hey, everybody. Um, well, the stuff that I'm especially proud of, you can tell I'm wearing a, a Nick Cage, a bloodied Nick Cage face on my shirt. Um, Mandy has been a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful gift that keeps on giving its Thank impact. You. It, Thank you, David. Yes, Mandy, you <laughs> are the gift. <laughs> yeah, Mandy. Both, both so Mandys incredible. are our gift. And um, it's really had an impact, not only as a, as a story, but on the way films are shot. Uh, I don't know if anybody got a chance to see the new Nick Cage movie, but uh, Mandy actually was featured in it. It's awesome. in a really nice way. So that's it's one project. Very worth watching too. That movie. Yeah, probably. it's really, it's really, really fun. Yeah. And and that's something um, I'm really proud of. I'm also very proud of um, our hand and footprint ceremony that we did for Stan Lee. Uh, that was at a really, really tough time in his life. His wife had just passed away, and I really believe that we actually had an impact on him when he got up. It was a very heartfelt thank you to all the fans. And um, so that, th that those are two things that I, I always feel uh, very proud that we did. I'm really looking forward to Mary's Monster. Uh, I am a huge uh, Frankenstein fan. Um, I usually do cosplay as Frankenstein. I'm 6'8", so there you go. Um, and it's so cool that Kit Harrington has come on board to play the role of the monster, uh, yeah. which is really more of an alter ego to Mary Shelley. This is going to be a really, really cool movie. And uh, I think everybody's going to be super excited once uh, once that comes out. So those are the things uh, I'm thinking about. Uh, but I want to toast the, the <coughs> incredible team. I mean, I'm going to echo everybody else's thoughts. But I really feel like we've there we, we've got that we've captured the magic in a bottle. Mm -hmm. Everybody here loves what they do. And they're passionate about it. And um, I think you're going to see it more each each and every year. It's exactly what Jeff said. We, we've we've lifted off from the the launch pad, and then things are going to start moving really fast. And we so appreciate uh, the community of investors and non-investors alike who have backed us. Uh, you've made our you've you've made our lives really wonderful. So thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers to that. Cheers. Love it. Michelle, you want to go? Was that me? Uh huh. Yeah, um, I think the thing that I'm the most proud of um, currently is uh, Legion's internship program. We've had a lot of uh, incredibly talented students that have come through our program and have gone on to do amazing things. And uh, I'm just, I'm really, I'm really proud of them and uh, really proud of kind of the program that we put together at Legion M for, for those students looking to uh, get some hands-on experience uh, in Hollywood. And I think I'm most looking forward to just selling some more TV shows and really making Legion M a household name, so. Awesome. Well, you deserve a lot of credit for putting that internship program. Here, here. Everybody here. Everyone here, here does a great job, okay. so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric. Hey, Legion M. Uh, how's everyone doing? Well, <laughs> what am I proud of? First and foremost, um, really quickly, uh, I'd like to say that I'm proud of being with Legion M actually from day one and being around uh, with Jeff and Paul from the very beginning and just being around for too many years. <laughs> for too, too many, many years. years. Yeah. <laughs> I had to say that quickly first, um, but really um, I'm actually uh, proud to be a part of uh, the Man in the White Band when we actually got to film that down in Louisiana uh, last October. Um, just being on set and being on a production set um, was amazing. And it was just eye-opening just to see all the things that's involved in just making a movie. Uh, and I actually understand why there's so many names at the end of a credit now, you know, at the movie. So, you know, um, there really is all those people there helping to make a movie. So that's one thing I'm proud of that we, we filmed the movie. So, um, and what I'm looking forward to and what I'm really excited about is actually Moving on to, uh, I guess, one of our projects, um, and I guess seeing our a TV series with uh, any major streaming provider, I think that's that would be awesome to see next. So that's what I'm excited about. Awesome. Cheers to that. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers, Cheers brother. Mm -hmm. Cheers.
Yay. I like that glass. We're toasting so much. Everybody, yeah, it's everybody's going to be drunk here. before oh we God. get into this. <laughs> We're not going to be able to finish this. Except for John, right. who's going to be super, yeah, super really. awake. <laughs> Coffee. All right. Uh, who do we got? Chris Cooper. Hey, hey, guys. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, so I'm, I'm with Eric. Uh, just, uh, you know, I'm just proud to, to, to know the team and to know Jeff and Paul from back in the day and always uh, to just be a part of what they're doing has been a blessing. Um, so I think um, back in the day, uh, it wasn't common to see a young black guy sitting at the table with you know, Verizon and you know, AT&T and NBA. I'd walk in the room with NASCAR and, and here, here, here comes my happy ass. You know, and it was cool that they, that they gave me the shot back then and just believed in the work that we were doing. And they're still the same to this day. So I'm most proud to be a part of the team with, with, with everyone here. Um, the all-star team that we have right now is just incredible. Um, you know, especially taking a story that came from the Legion with Captain Small, something that's woven deep into the fabric of uh, United States and kind of elevating that to a place where it can be absorbed properly by everyone. Uh, it's just been an amazing journey and I, I love to be a part of that. And we're gonna have some really cool announcements hopefully coming up soon in that, in, on that project. Um, the thing I'm looking forward to the most is just continuing to elevate the fact that, you know, diversity is not just really a thing. It's part of just being a part of society. You know, um, diversity is profitable. Um, you know, it's a business imperative where we can continuously, you know, underscore the fact that diverse audiences prefer diverse content. We're all diverse. Just look at the screen, look at the Legion. It's who we are. So I just want to, I'm looking forward to continue to working with everyone um, to treat that as a first first order of business. So cheers to to you guys. Love you guys. Oh yeah, cheers. Thank you, Chris. That's that. awesome. All right, Ramona. Hi everyone. Um, what am I most proud of? I'm proud that you know I'm around one investor and I took a chance on this. You know, I sat there and I thought, do I want to invest in this unknown thing? But I really believed in Paul and Jeff. And I'm really glad I took that opportunity to invest because once I invested, I became completely involved with you guys, was always showing up at your events. I've been able to have these once in a lifetime experiences as a investor. And now I'm on staff part-time, which is like, wow, how cool is that? So <laughs> it's like a full circle moment. So um, I love the diverse, diverse slate of projects that we've done. And the fact that now we're being inundated with all these projects, it's like, it's like rapid fire, it's crazy. But it's also super exciting because people know who we are. Like I was just at Fan Expo Dallas and people know who we are. We don't even have to give the whole spiel. They're like, yeah, I've heard of Legion M and they know our movies, especially Mandy and Jay and Silent Bob. So that's what I'm most proud of. Uh, what I'm excited for is to keep expanding the Legion and also to um, expand our elite scout program, which we really wanna tap into all those people. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Thanks, cheers. Awesome. Thank Cheers. you for believing us in round one. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll we'll keep this moving, but I'm going to just do a quick, you know, what I'm most proud of. Really, it's this team. Like, I'm so proud of this team that that came together uh, and believing in this movement and and what we're all about and our community and just how incredibly supportive they are. And over the last couple of years, it's really been an interesting phenomenon where, just like Jeff said, normally we would start a conversation explaining what Legion M is. Most of the calls start today with, wow, I've heard so much about you guys. And I've heard that you're so incredible to work with. And we just want to figure out how we can get you involved in our project. And you know, that wasn't how things were in year one, two, three, or four, really. And, you know, it's it's happening. So I'm really proud that, you know, we've reached that point. And now, like Jeff said, it's, you know, we, we've, we've cleared the launch pad. We still have a long way to go, but, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot, things are smoother now. We're, you know, people are coming to us. We always said in the early days, like, God, won't it be amazing when we don't have to hunt for projects so badly that, you know, they're coming to us and, and we have to say no. And that's, you know, that's one of the hard parts is that with all these projects, you know, it's, it, we have to say no more frequently, but it means that we're getting better selections. Uh, and what I'm most looking forward to, um, 
you know, really it was the whole purpose of Legion M is to unite a community into a built-in audience that's not confined to sequels or reboots of an existing franchise. And I am looking forward to introducing the world to new franchises, original IP and creating the next big franchises that, that, that come from us and proving that a fan-owned entertainment company is, you know, truthfully the, the right way to do it. You know, it should have been this way all along. Um, it wasn't, but you know, we're, we're moving forward with it. All right. So that was, um, all right, let me pull back to our screen here and share, um, uh, let's see, hold on. I gotta get up here, it's hiding my menu. All right. So thank you, team. You're amazing. Um, State of the Legion. And now, uh, you know, before we, when we did the invite to this uh, worldwide toast, we uh, allowed our community to, we asked our community to, you know, answer those same two questions. And we got some really inspiring uh, feedback. It's so nice to see, and I've seen even in the comments on the stream, um, you know, how people feel and we're, we're just so appreciative, but so we've, we've included a few in the, uh, in the interstitials here just to, because we're, we're proud of them and we appreciate, you know, Pascal, you know, this is such a nice thing that you say here. Um, and we, we believe, we believe it. We feel the same way as you. All right. So Jeff, I think you, you want to do the round eight recap, take us through the next couple slides. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, yeah, sure. There's not too much. Uh, most of the information is actually on this. Uh, like Paul alluded at the beginning, round eight was our largest round ever. Uh, it also was uh, our fastest round ever. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, we we welcomed six over 6,000 investors. Uh, we sold it out twice uh, for, you know, hopefully you guys all remember. We uh, initially came out with the with a maximum of $3 million and uh, we hit that uh, with about three months and then we uh, went back and extended it because there was a little bit of room left under the legal cap and uh, we're just really proud of uh, how well the round came together and it's you know I mean you see the results of that with the projects uh, that are coming out now it, it gave us some cash uh, to invest in new projects to look at uh, expanding a little bit uh, and we're putting that work to uh, to that money to work as quickly and as effectively, hopefully, as possible. So, uh, the the really the update is we just this week received the final disbursement from um, Start Engine, so we can get everybody imported in the cap table. At this point, I'd say probably ninety eight percent of the people have been imported, uh, but we got the final list, and so once we get those folks um, imported, then it's time for the stock split. And uh, you'll uh, we'll have some updates about that. You know, I would expect within the next you know month or so, uh, and that'll be uh, um, uh, that's when we'll do the ten for one talk stock split. So that's about it. <clears throat> All right. Now I think we're gonna we're gonna roll straight into growth, Jeff. So you can keep going. all right yes well thank you Catherine for you know I think we all believe in that and uh, uh, we pulled this number uh, uh, you can go ahead Paul we pulled this number literally a couple hours ago and like I said our investor number changes because of the fact that we're constantly getting new uh, updates from start engine so this is what it is as of today and it'll go up a little bit more from here once we import the last uh, one and like I said earlier this is this makes us one of the largest uh, um, in the United States, there might be one or two that are larger. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I know Start Engine as a platform has somewhere around this number of investors. Um, but I, we're trying to think about like how do you quantify what 35,000 investors means? What is it? What does that actually mean? And so we did a little math and said, well, hey, what if we were going to take a road trip and we wanted to bring the entire Legion along? So I looked up this bus right here. If we wanted to rent 
rent these buses for our road trip, we would need 707 of them to fit the entire Legion. That's the not a small bus either. Staff, what's that? That's not a small bus. No, that's not a small bus. Uh, the parking stack, as they lined up, would be over six miles long. And when we got out on the highway, uh, assuming that we are following the four second rule, right? I know three seconds is what you do for a car, but I figure a bus full of people, at, at least four seconds, would be the convoy would be over 57 miles long. And so um, I, I, I don't know. I just thought that that was a really fun way to kind of look at it. And I am more excited than ever to get us all in buses. We just kind of find a, did you include find a rental putting, company. Did you include putting Maryland in the front? Oh my God! No, oh, then, then we're definitely yeah. That's yeah. that's a the pace car. <laughs> that's right. That's awesome. So um, the uh, uh, one thing we wanted to just touch on here is our twenty. 21 financial uh, results. Uh, uh, probably about a month ago, we released our 2021 annual report. Uh, as you probably know, we do pu audited public financial filings uh, every year, and we do non-audited ones every six months. And so those are all available. If you go to legionm.com slash investor relations, um, it's also, if you go to legionm.com and look in the, in the, in the nav, you'll find it. Um, but you can see all of our SEC filings. Uh, everything is completely audited by an independent auditing firm that crawls through everything. It's a complete nightmare. Um, uh, you know, if you've ever experienced an audit, you know, I, I, I tell people it's kind of like getting a colonoscopy. Like it's so uncomfortable when it happens, but when it's done, you feel really good that you've done it, you know, and it, it, it makes us feel really good and really confident that we have had somebody, you know, crawl through all of our receipts and all of our accounts and confirm that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And it's a, a huge amount of work. But um, anyway, so so uh, this is the top line revenue number. Our revenue is continuing to grow. Uh, as we always say when we talk about this, like we are not very focused on revenue right now as a company. And I want to explain what that means. It's not that we don't care about it. I mean, obviously, revenue is important and profit is is ultimately what's important for the company. But at the stage that we're at as a company, the most important thing we believe is growth of the legion, growth of the community, right? If we can achieve that goal of a million shareholders, I think that's the ball game. If we can achieve that, this company will go off into the stratosphere. And, you know, so right now, that is our North Star. And that is what we're trying to do is to figure out how we can unite as many people as possible and how we can, you know, leverage that, take advantage of that to create durable competitive advantages in what is one of the most comp, uh, uh, competitive markets and industries on the planet. Like that's what what, what we do. So we're, we're, we're very pleased with the fact that our revenue is growing. Um, revenue in the entertainment industry is very lumpy. Sometimes it takes years before it comes in. And, and sometimes, you know, you can have a million dollar payment that, you know, falls in one quarter versus the next. And so um, anyway, all those caveats aside, our revenue is growing. What we're most actually excited about is the chart on the right, which just shows the accumulating revenue streams. And you can see the reason our revenue growing is is because of the fact that we are just layering on more and more projects that contribute revenue to the legion and that's something that we hope will uh, continue to expand uh, very rapidly in the future all the other results are in that financial report i encourage uh, everybody to read it <laughs> we spend a lot of time and work on it so please read it and uh, if you ever have any questions just you know shoot us an email at team at legionm.com you know, it, it all speaks to something that we've mentioned before, and it's sort of analogous to that, you know, rocket launching analogy, which is, you know, Legion M, we're a flywheel, and, and we're investing in that flywheel, and it's, you know, getting those first few rotations are the hardest part to get going, but as that flywheel starts to, starts to turn on its own, you know, one of the things, and we've already seen this as evidenced in our negotiations and projects and is that the growth of our Legion community is allowing us to get into bigger and better projects and make a bigger impact, which then creates a better odds for success with our projects that helps us grow the Legion. So this 
this flywheel concept is absolutely working for us. We're still, as Jeff points out, we're in that buildup phase. We're not focused on maximizing our revenue. We're focused on maximizing the, the growth and size and impact of our community because we know as that gets bigger and better and more powerful that it'll pay you know, massive dividends to all of us in the future. And that's really what we're, what we're focused on. Um, but looking forward, we do have some, some objectives that we wanna talk about. Um, just real quick to highlight Victor, Victor's appreciation of uh, the fact that we're listening. And you know, we said at the very beginning of starting Legion M, and I think it was one of the things that most people probably doubted the most was, well, you know, will they really listen to you? And, you know, Jeff and I always thought that was kind of interesting that people would even question that because for us, that is so much of the value of the community is to, to harness your insight and your wisdom and your, your, your ideas and to, you know, make smarter decisions. So, I'm glad Victor is uh, appreciating that. Um, so for our, our long-term, you know, what are we focused on right now? And this probably won't change. I think this is very similar slide that we've showed uh, in the past. We're really focused on and growing the Legion. That is 100% what we're, what we're focused on. We also want to expand our platform. And what we mean by that is, you know, when we look at, the, at Legion M as a company, it's a community but it's also a platform, a platform that allows us to scalably, you know, get your, allow you to have a voice and harness that insight, um, but also to, to, you know, coordinate things when we want to have a meetup and we want to get people together. Um, so we're building the platform, which includes Film Scout, and Meetup Maker, and some more stuff, Impulse, you know, the, all those opportunities for you to have a voice that we really genuinely listen to. Uh, and we have a new one that uh, that Mandy's going to talk about soon. Um, and then, you know, cultivating new revenue streams uh, and just harnessing the the power of the of the Legion. You know, our near term goals. I'm going to go through this quickly. Uh, Jeff mentioned seventy thousand. Uh, I think seventy thousand is a really good target. Right now, we're focused on getting to fifty thousand investors, um, and and that is very doable. Like, I mean, it's not easy. But, you know, we're going to open up round nine and we're expecting, you know, round nine, even with some of the um, economy headwinds uh, heading, you know, and inflation and everything, we're still hopeful and optimistic uh, that we can have another successful round. Um, we're looking to double uh, our projects uh, and the slate. And Terry will talk about that a little bit more. Um, one of the things that we're really eager to do is increase the size of the the checks that we're cutting when we do make an investment in something, you know, right now we're, we're somewhat limited there. Like we don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket, but because we're adding so much value to those projects by Legion M attaching and supporting those projects, if we cut a bigger check, it doesn't take any more time or energy for us to do that. We'll just be getting more revenue and more impact and upside from those projects from the projects that we're adding value to. Right now we're adding value and, and truthfully, a lot of the other investors are gaining that value as much if not more than we are. Uh, and then of course, you know, bigger project investments will help us grow, grow the revenues. Um, a few specific things that we're really kind of centered on right now as a team, uh, we wanna sell and produce a studio level film. We have multiple in the works, Mary Mo Mary's Monster with Kit Harrington, Defiant that Chris mentioned earlier that we're working on. Those are, these are the biggest projects Legion M has, has been involved in. Um, so if we can get one of those to hit, those will be really big, you know, uh, trajectory changes for Legion M. We want to finish. I mean, look at all the projects we have in the works. Man in the White Band, Nandor, this is not financial advice. These are all heading into, into post-production. Man in the White Band's already in it. Nandor just wrapped. This is not financial advice. Is in a like a almost a final uh, final cut, uh, so that'll be uh, coming soon. Um, and then we want to produce and release at least one more feature film. And this is in the near term. Obviously, we want to do a lot more over time. Um, but we have you know we have existing projects. Girl with no name. Uh, Terry will give some insight on that. Jelly. We have a new project 
uh, that we're going to tell you about later. Um, and then we want to continue to, to develop and sell uh, our TV projects and get one of those going. We're, uh, we're looking and interested in, um, in expanding our development team with a new hire uh, and expanding that slate to 30 plus projects, which is you know, going to be incredible. All right, so uh, next up, David Baxter, you want to talk about San Diego Comic-Con? I sure do. Um, so <laughs> we've got a lot of amazing things uh, happening at San Diego Comic-Con, and we can't tell you about a lot of them right now. But um, we did reach out to San Diego to find out exactly what we could say. And what they said, and this is, I think, pretty funny, um, is we've, we're going to have four panels. And they're going to be spotlight panels filled with cool, high-profile talent that will put Legion M in an outstanding light with fans and media alike and should provide new opportunities for us going forward in terms of exposure, notoriety, and additional fan support and participation. What all that means is we've got some really, really cool stuff that, again, we cannot say specifically what it is, but keep an eye out uh, in about a week information is going to start to get out there and we are confident that you guys are going to be very excited about this um you know we should probably start some way of knowing who amongst uh our community plans to be at sdcc uh so that we can all uh coordinate and maybe get together but one place you can go uh where you are sure to see um a lot of us is the San Diego Comic-Con Legion M booth. Um, this is our first booth. I'm going to probably let Mandy um, talk a little bit about it, but I just want to say that there is a five-year waiting list for this. So we're in year six and we finally got in. So uh, congrats to everybody. That takes a lot of patience to get to. Mandy, do you want to talk a little bit about the booth? Hi everybody, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, so I'm not going to, but uh, please do if you're at SCCC, come down to our booth, we're going to have exclusive products, we're going to have product that I can't talk about quite yet, uh, but hopefully very, very soon, that's really all I can give you, and then of course a lot of us will be there throughout the time, and we love saying hi to you, it's our favorite part of going to these cons, so please come see us at our booth at Comic Con. Are we going straight right, into Andy, merchandising? Keep going. Roll right straight into merchandising. Yeah. You're up. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, once again, my name is Mandy Bradisbanian. Uh, I'm the vice president of licensing and merchandising for Legion M. Uh, do you want to roll the slide for me, Taylor? All right. So a couple big, big wins for Legion M that a lot of you should know about, but I just want to recap how epic all of this is. Uh, Mandy, the movie, has been, um, as David said earlier, a, the gift that keeps on giving for Legion M. Uh, and we've been able to take this IP and uh, branch it out into uh, lots of different licensing with amazing brands um, and, uh, and do some really, really fun and unique products with us on our own website. So as you guys have seen, we were able to this year finally bring back the uh, full-size beast replica from the film, which was also featured in the Nicolas Cage movie about Nicolas Cage. Uh, if you if you see us saw that, we supplied that for them. Um, and I'm sure you have seen all the photos of David Baxter wearing our uh, Red Miller hyper-realistic mask <laughs> around Comic-Cons. Uh, that is very creepy and awesome, and we still have a couple units left if you didn't get yours yet. And then something I am incredibly proud of, and this entire team should be incredibly proud of, is our line of Funkos from, um, from Mandy that we were able to launch last year. And uh, I, this is just, you know, once we hit that level, that was like, okay, all right, we're in it. <laughs> we're, we're here. Uh, when we got our line of Funkos, it was really, really exciting for all of us. And then, of course, uh, the Dark Nights and Daydreams uh, campaign last year was an amazing success. So thank you to everyone who contributed to that. Um, and the big wins just keep coming. Taylor, next slide, please. All right. Oh, uh, Paul, <laughs> thank you for the slide. Um, all right, and uh, the something that we is coming up, because uh, I can't tell you, there's a lot of things in the works right now with merchandising that I'm unable to tell you about right now. Uh, there's a lot of NDAs that fly around what I do. 
Uh, but please do stay tuned because there's some really exciting things on the horizon uh, in merchandise and licensing. But something I can tell you about that we're all very, very excited about is the Hollywood Reader's Room. This is going to be a monthly subscription book club that Legion M is, um, you can kind of think of it like a, like a subsidiary of Legion M that we are creating right now. Uh, it is, we are almost done uh, creating the platform this will be on. And what's really unique about this, this book club is that you will be reading right alongside, uh, reading books right alongside, you know, real Hollywood producers, um, the Legion M team. And what we are hoping for here is that you from our community can read these books alongside of us and, um, and help us to find the next big IP. You know, the idea is, you know, think about what it was like for, you know, the producers of Harry Potter to read, you know, those books for the first time or what it's like for, um, for the Marvel, you know, directors to, to read through the comics, you know, to, to create those, those stories uh, that we love so much on screen. Um, so this is what the Hollywood Reader's Room is going to be. We are very, very excited to, uh, to launch this and stay tuned. We're almost there. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you, Mandy. All right. Terry Luberoff. Are you, yes. Uh, still with us? I All am right. still with you. <laughs> we are ready Hi. to dive into the moment everyone's been waiting for. Project update. Project update. Can, can we read some of these quotes though? These are so awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I I love this one from um, Julio. The growing, what he loves best about Legion M, um, what excites him the most about Legion M is the growing list of projects, also the variety, and he loves how eclectic the projects are. And as we as we go through some of these projects, you'll see what he means because we we really do try to bring in a lot of different types of ideas. Um, so uh, I'll start with, uh, first of all, I'll start with some news. Um, as everybody knows, I think this is the order that we're gonna do this in, right, Paul? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you hear, yeah, right? okay. yeah, absolutely. Cool, okay. So um, everybody knows we announced uh, late last, we announced early last year, actually, that we were um, very excited that we sold our first animated series to a major streamer. It was a huge milestone for Legion M. Um, we have been in development on that series ever since. We've been extremely happy with the creative direction of the show, um, the, the level of writers that are working on it, uh, the entire package of the series and how it was coming together. Uh, just we've been over the moon with the whole thing. But if you've been reading the news, it might not be a surprise to learn that there has been some contraction in that space over the last month. And late last week, we unfortunately learned that that project is going to be put in to turnaround at this streamer. Um, the streamer assured us it was a pure business decision. It had nothing to do with the creative in fact, they love the creative and they're so supportive of the project that they, they want us to take it out of that streamer and go sell it elsewhere. So we're in the middle of negotiating a turnaround deal now. All of the partners on the project remain fully committed to it to find a new home. And if the current work is any indication, I feel pretty confident uh, that we'll, we'll find someone who will be interested in buying that. Um, it's not the news that everybody wanted to hear, but it's also not a huge surprise. Uh, we'll have more details as we're allowed to give more details over the next several weeks. It is part of the natural ups and downs of the industry. And um, this is part of why we're so focused on growing our slate. So we have more of those opportunities at bat. Um, I'm most excited to bring this particular project to life. I still am not allowed to tell you the name of it, <laughs> We're still under NDA, but it is really wonderful. And the level of talent on it is out of this world. It, it, will, it will really put Legion M on a map um, that we're not currently on. So uh, just wanted to let everybody know about that at the outset, since we're talking about projects. Um, okay, so also, since we're talking about projects, let's go on to the next slide. Okay. Well, and real quick, just on, to hit uh, quickly on that, you know, it's, yep. it's one of the things that you'll find about us and hopefully appreciate is we're always going to be transparent and honest. So we want to tell you about our wins, but we're also going to tell you about 
when we have setbacks. And, you know, this is this is a pretty big setback, but as Terry mentioned, it's also like, we should be very proud of how far we got it. And, you know, the reason it's in turnaround has nothing to do with the project. It's just circumstantial based on the, the economy and what's, what's happening. But we are very, you know, the project has made substantial uh, steps forward. So it's a, it's in a better place aside of the fact that, you know, we've been liking it to, you know, did we, you know, running a marathon, like you train and you train and you run a marathon. We ran the marathon. We got, we crossed the finish line. You know, it's not that we didn't, you know, win or, you know, we didn't make it. We did make it, but now circumstantially, you know, we've had a setback on it. So we got to, but we've trained for this. So we can, we're not like starting from scratch and now we're running our first marathon. Now we're running another marathon and we're going to run a lot of marathons over the next several years. And, you know, we're always going to be sharing uh, the ups and the downs with you. So, all right, Terry, with that. Absolutely. So that was amazing. well said, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with that quick update on Man in the White Van, um, as, as hopefully many of you know, this was Legion M's first uh, project that we uh, produced uh, by ourselves. And um, we finished uh, principal photography very, very recently, actually. Um, and we're in post-production. Uh, there, there is a lot going on with the project in terms of we're doing a social impact campaign that I'm not allowed to announce yet, but I can tell you it's really exciting. And it's part of Legion M does good when we take some something that um, can be helpful and send a message to people and support an organization um, that has just a, a really important mission that I it would personally be very proud to be part of. But as Legion M, I think we should all be proud to be part of. That will be announced um, in the next couple of months. We're going to be beginning sales for the project immediately, um, or imminently, I should say. We've applied to some film festivals. We'll see if we get into any. Um, and we also have a soundtrack of original music that's almost done, including an original song for this charity, which is so good. The first time I heard it, I was blubbering like a baby. It was really emotional and awesome. And all the actors who worked on the project are super supportive. Um, you know, if, if we're going to make appearances at comic cons and film festivals they're all on board so everybody had a really good experience on the film and uh we'll be excited to share more when we can uh david do you want to pop on for this as well nandor fodor and the talking mongoose yes absolutely um you know one of the cool things about this project is that the director uh adam seagal actually we we, we met him a few years back uh, when he was doing, uh, sort of developing another project. And we, we had a really, really good experience and we're, we're like, uh, this guy is definitely gonna go somewhere. And he has definitely gone somewhere. Um, Nandor, Fodor and the, uh, Nandor, Fodor and the Talking Mongoose. Uh, I will put on my best voice to describe this project. It's a cynical paranormal investigator goes to a small town on the Isle of Man in the UK to investigate a series of incidents in, uh, involving a talking mongoose. Basically a family or like a regular family just sort of said, we are being uh, haunted by a mongoose. In fact, a talking mongoose that lives in the walls. And it became kind of a, a celebrity thing. This is based on a true story in the 1930s. And the one of the world's first parapsychologists, he's a paranormal investigator named Nandor Fodor, decided to go and find out what was going down. And when this project came to us, it was just seemed so crazy, but the script was wonderful. And not only was the script wonderful, the director had gotten the attention of Simon Pegg, who had read the script and said it was the best, most interesting script he had read in years and was desperate to get it done. So desperate that he went to Tom Cruise, his boss on Mission Impossible, and asked for time off to be able to shoot this. Well, um, Adam pulled together an incredible cast that includes Chris Lloyd from Back to the Future, Doc Brown, Minnie Driver, 
um, you know, uh, Academy Award winning mini driver. Um, and um, also, um, um, I think it's Ruth Connell from Supernatural. Yeah. So there's a ton of really cool people involved in this. It's a dark comedy um, and it's shot. And so we can't wait for this to, to get out there. And uh, we think you'll all find this to be really, really interesting. By the way, I am the vice president of development for anybody who doesn't know. So there you go, David Baxter, hi. <laughs> anything, do you have anything to add on that one, Taylor? No uh, Terry? Well, Taylor has a video. Oh, I sure do. Yeah, let's, right. let's play the video. Play the video. All right. Sorry, there we go. Turning that back on. Cool. So uh, Adam Segal, he gave us uh, a really cool insight into the casting process a little while ago. Um, so just a uh, heads up, some fun facts about this. Uh, a lot of this features some really cool behind the scenes photos from the shoot, which we haven't shared on social media yet. You're the first ones to see them. Uh, and also Christopher Lloyd at the time had not been cast. So he doesn't mention him, but he's got a few photos in there. So enjoy. We'll be back in about two and a half minutes. So, so my, my leading, leading man, man the, the actor, actor playing Nandor Fodor, is the absolutely legendary, incredible Simon Pegg. And I, Simon is just, like I said on the previous video, if you wanted to have a geek icon, I mean, I mean he's Mission Impossible, Star Trek, Star Wars, oh, and also Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, and just some of the greatest like cult classic films. Know. And Simon just couldn't have gravitated harder to this project. He just really like fell in love. He, you know, we talked for a, a long time about personal, it, you know, aspects of Nandor that are very similar to him. And he has gone all in. I mean, he's calling me daily about his facial hair and his wig and his accent and how Nandor should walk and how he should look. And, and it's amazing. Like he's such a great guy. Opposite Simon equally exciting is the legendary mini driver who is just one of my favorite actresses and when i talked to simon about this we kind of had the same immediate response where my casting director said hey mini driver you know she her agent read the script likes it for her what do you think and i was like god i love mini driver are you kidding me and so i called simon i said what do you think about mini driver he said dude gross point blank man He's like, I'll, I'll be in love with her for the rest of my life from that movie. And I was like, okay, good. And so she, we got her and she's fantastic. She's equally excited about playing this bizarre role in the film. And then the supporting cast is really cool. We have a, an amazing actor named Paul Kay, who on, he was on Game of Thrones. He was the, the, the priest with the flaming sword from mm -hmm. what i recall who is mm -hmm. iconic on that show and he's just an absolute maniac i'm so excited for him um a lovely actor named tim downey who most honestly was most well known from outlander but he's a very popular british actor we're putting together kind of a really cool cast of like british supporting character actors um a lovely actress named ruth connell who is really good she's known for, i believe supernatural she's been on that show for a long time um and then an amazing actor named gary beetle who's also just this guy that shows up in every british film i think my favorite part of it is that simon's decision was he really wanted to do an american accent for nandor he was determined to do this american accent with a slight twin tinge of Hungarian. He sounds a little bit like Christoph Waltz. I just, it just tickles me that <laughs> this incredibly famous British actor is, is playing an American surrounded by all these British actors playing British. It just, for some reason, just cracks me up every time I see him, you know, or hear him talking in this accent. So anyway, that's the cast. Simon well, is gonna destroy. All right, and we're back. Awesome. Uh, how cool is that? It that, looks so that's a fun, Yeah, that's a fun project. We're super excited. It's a comedy. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention about Man in the White Van, which uh, was different than Nandor, um, for Nandor, we were able to bring people to do set visits in Leeds, England, which was really 
wonderful. And it's a, a large part of how Legion M wants to operate when we're in production. For Man in the White Van, we are producing that in the height of COVID. So we were not able to do set visits, but we were able to hire Legion M members to be part of our crew, which I'm really proud of. And we can talk about how people can make sure that we um, look at their resumes for future productions as well. But um, you know, those are the types of things that we want to continue to do moving forward. And casting also, by the way, we we cast Legion M people as background actors in Man in the White Van. There are dogs outside. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right. <laughs> this is not financial advice. Paul, you go. Yeah, so we just recently announced this. This is something that we've been working on with the Optimist team that we who we really have grown to love over the last year as we've gotten to know them. And you know this project is is really special to us. You've probably seen the video from Chris Temple, the director, one of the directors, um, you know, talking about uh, their excitement to have the Legion involved. But you know, one of the reasons why we felt like this project is so interesting is that Legion M we're at the forefront of what we think could be, you know, a new wave, a new. We're redefining what it means to be a shareholder. And, you know, this is happening all over the world with, you know, blockchain and cryptocurrency and NFTs and equity crowdfunding. You know, the world is in an ever changing pace and there's an entirely new investor community that is driving a lot of the changes that we're experiencing. And, you know, that is that's one of the things that we really feel strongly about. And so what we love about this project is it really goes deep in following and understanding, you know, the psychology of this new wave of investing. And, you know, and it's got its ups and downs and it follows Pro, the Dogecoin, Dogecoin millionaire. I don't know if you've heard of him, um, but, you know, he absolutely went, you know, through the roof with his investment and then rode it all the way back down and is still, you know, talking about it and and working with it and so but the film the filmmakers first of all are amazing the film is really uh not only interesting and in, and in covering a topic that i think is is really you know important for all of us to understand but you know we also think there's a huge market for it um and that it'll be a you know ultimately a smart project for us to be involved in because you know, it's it's something that that the whole world is compelled by, um, and yeah. so we're we're really interested or excited about the prospects for this film, and uh, we're, we're we'll be meeting with the Optimist team to you know try to show you uh, bits and pieces and um, and give you a little more insight into the project, and hopefully have a uh, a place where we'll be premiering it soon at a festival. Um, yeah, that's it. This one's also fun, and we've talked with them. About that we can use it as as almost like an educational tool. Like as Paul said, I mean, it's very entertaining. It's a wild story, but I, you know, one of the things that I love about it is that it really helps kind of explain some of this stuff, right? Because for a lot of people, they look at like, oh, Legion M, isn't that kind of like, you know, NFTs or isn't that like Dogecoin? You're like, well, no, it's completely different, you know? And uh, what I love about this movie is that in addition to telling the wildly entertainment story about uh, Pro and the Dogecoin journey, it also contrasts that against a number of other, you know, really fascinating people with different investment styles and, you know, from people that are investing in Procter and Gamble to, you know, people that are investing in, in virtual space in, in, uh, in the metaverse. And so it's a, it's a really cool dive, but it's also, we feel now more than ever, you know, we have all this power and what, what a lot of people need is the context and the understanding to be able to tell the difference between like, no, this is a legit investment or this is kind of out there and, you know, or this is an old style and this is a new style and all that sort of stuff. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, a lot of people probably know that we're also working on this amazing movie about Mary Shelley writing Frankenstein. Um, it's called Mary's Monster. And we have a video for this, too. Should we play that? Yeah. Just go that, ahead and play that. Yeah, that talks about a lot of things. Sure thing. Okay. 
Awesome. Yeah. So this is a video uh, from Farron Blackburn and the creative team uh, at Rose Pictures. Rose Ganguza, one of the producers, as well as uh, Heather Greenwood. And it's uh, basically just Farron, the director of the film, talking about uh, casting the project. So uh, without further ado, here we go. Well, here, well, here we, we go. go. Here's, Here's some, some cast, cast for you. you. So playing Mary Shelley, we have Clara Rugard. So Clara is just, uh, well, if you, if you don't know about her, you're going to know know about her very very soon she's a, an, an incredible actress um, just to give you a, an idea of the process um, given the the world we're currently living in um, I, I didn't get to meet her in the room um, I had a zoom call with her to sort of give her a general idea about how I saw Mary Shelley um, we then sent her some scenes to have a look at scenes that were um, incredibly layered incredibly complex um, and I didn't expect her to do anything other than sort of scratch at the surface with, with what she sent back on a self-tape. And when we all saw that self-tape, it literally blew us away. Um, she was absolutely incredible. I've never seen um, someone get it quite the way she did in, in such a short period of time and have such a handle on, on the character. And from a directorial point of view, if she can achieve that or we can achieve that in a sort of five or 10 minute conversation and then she goes and tapes herself in her own bedroom, then, you know, what we can achieve when we actually get on the set of Mary's Monster is absolutely incredible. Percy Shelley is going to be played by Ferdia walsh Pirlo from Coda fame. Um, again, an amazing actor really, really sort of got a handle on, on Percy Shelley. We talked, I think, previously about these guys being the sort of rock stars of, of the day. Um, and I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised about how we present Ferdia in this movie because he couldn't look more different um, to, to what he looked like in, uh, in Coda. Um, I mean, big hair, let's just leave it at that. You know, you've also got Lord Byron, and who was a, um, how do I put it? He was larger than life in his own day. He was the rock star. So how do you, how do you cast that? Who did we get for Byron? Well, you cast someone like Sebastian D'Souza. He is, uh, again, he's incredible. He just captured Byron um, in a way that, you know, again, I just wasn't expecting such a complex role um, with, with so many different facets. Who is the monster? No one else other than Kit Harrington. Kit, again, uh, just incredible, incredible actor. But I think, um, I think we're gonna see him in a way that we've never seen him before. And, and that excites me. It excites him, having spoken to him about, um, about the, the potential for this character. Um, we've already had one or two sort of initial creative conversations about, you know, how I see the monster, but also, you know, his input is vital. Um, he, his mind's whirring already. He's coming up with some some really great ideas. And and we are, we're just going to see a different kind of Kit Harrington. So, um, you know, the audience are, are, are going to have their minds blown. They really are. All right, everybody. How cool is that? Another awesome sort of you know window into the casting process of one of our of one of our latest projects. So we'll keep you up to date with that. Um, so uh, let's turn it back over. Keep running through some of these amazing projects. Tales of the Moonlight Cutter. Yes. So this is one we just announced. We are so excited about this one. It's a series of graphic novels. When I first picked up these books and read them, um, I said to David you've got to read these. And he said, oh, can I borrow them? And I said, no, get your own. I <laughs> love these books so much. The art is amazing. The story is amazing. Um, it, it's an epic comic series that Dale Barry wrote. Um, it's the tale of Shen Hua Yen, better known by his unmatchable sword skills and the terrifying blade he wields, which can dispatch spirits of the unknown it's called the moonlight cutter and the series follows his saga and um talks about how he and a young woman strive to save the world from the netherworld's darkest evils and it starts in ancient china and it goes all the way up to modern day san francisco and it is 
awesome. Um, we're producing this with David Uslin and Dale Barry, and it, this is an animated series because it spans such a huge amount of um, time and and just you know I don't even know what to say. I'm just it would so be a hundred billion dollar. Film. It would be a hundred billion. Yes, exactly. It would be a hundred billion dollar show. Um, Powerhouse really Animation, who is known for Castlevania and Blood of Zeus and who are yeah. so amazing, um, are partnered with us on this. And um, the CEO there, Brad Graber, is a, mar a martial arts enthusiast and um, specialist. And because we're in the wuja genre, he is very excited to take this on. Um, we're just over the moon about this one. And if you're interested in reading the books, by the way, they're in our store. Um, and Dale Barry, who lives in San Francisco, sometimes you can catch him at a Comic-Con. Um, I don't know if he'll be at San Diego, but we'll find out. And if he will be, we'll let, we'll let you all know if, if you want to get his signature on something. Oh yeah. These are all going to be collectibles. This, these, these are all, you know, the original editions. So you should go and get them. But I think it's what also is super exciting is the writer uh, that we yes. have, which is Jeff Yang. Jeff is a, he's a journalist for the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times. Uh, he's the cultural consultant on Marvel's Shang-Chi. Uh, and he just wrote a New York Times bestselling book called Rise, um, we know, which is all about a pop history of Asian America from the 90s till now. It is a fantastic book. I really, really recommend everybody go out and get it. Um, everybody's talking about it. And this guy Jeff is pretty much the smartest writer I've ever met. Yeah, my gosh. He's amazing. <laughs> well, because, you know, Dale, it was interesting because Dale, you know, came up with the idea of kind of bringing this to modern day. And then Jeff just took it to a whole other level. So we're, we're really super excited about this one. So in the interest of time, let's keep going. Ah, David, you gonna take this one? Sure, Legion of Comedy. So, you know, beyond doing narrative fiction, um, we're really interested in, you know, non-scripted shows. And Legion of Comedy is our comedy incubator. Uh, we want to find, you know, the next great comedy teams, the next great stand-ups. Um, you know, Saturday Night Live just has like, one group of people, but we want to go out to the public to make this, to make these kinds of decisions. So Legion of Comedy is kind of a hybrid. It's a show, but it's also going to be an app. Again, going back to what Paul and Jeff are talking about, expanding our platform, it will become another part of our platform where you can sort of um, swipe right or left depending on um, you know, what you see on the app. And you can submit for yourself what that will be. Um, it's going to have kind of um, a TMZ feel, the show, uh, where we're going to have some seasoned comedians uh, surrounded by some young comedians talking about a lot of the things that have been, the, the different uh, you know, comedy sketches and so forth that have been discovered. Um, we can't tell you right now any names, but again, this is something that is in deep development right now. And uh, we think you're gonna laugh and we hope you're gonna get involved and give us your opinions uh, once the app is out and the show is out. Paul, did you wanna add anything? Yeah, just that, you know, Richard Silverman, one of our co-creators on this project is actively working and having some amazing meetings with talent and, and comedians and comedian uh, reps and the response to this project has been very positive. So we're, we're feeling really good about it. It's like any project, you know, it's not a done deal till it's a done deal. You know, we, uh, we, we work on a lot of these, but the reason to have a lot of them is, you know, in, in the hopes that one of them sticks and, but we're feeling good about this one enough that we wanted to give an update and let you know, you know, we announced this was part of one of the five projects that we announced in the last several weeks. And, uh, it's going well. So you, hopefully we'll have more updates, more tangible updates uh, in the near future. But uh, yeah, Richard and David and the team are, are working hard. So it's good. And it's, and it's super fun. People really are responding. And the, the, the comedians we've talked to just think it's a wonderful idea. So that gives us a lot of hope. Awesome. 
Um, and we had a lot of questions uh, from the Legion when we asked, do you have questions for the Worldwide Toast about what's going on with icons? Um, I can tell you that the original pilot that we shot with Stanley was of such high quality and had so much data that we literally did not have the technology available to us to edit it until probably in the last 18 months. Um, the technology has shifted a lot over the, well, it's been four years since we shot it. Um, and we have a new pilot that we're going to be producing with 40 Fun and Brian Seth Hurst. 40 Fun has a new volumetric capture facility and a way to make you feel when you're in VR that you are literally in the room. Um, and it's a platform where you can go to concerts and you can walk in a room and watch a comedy show or you can um, interact with people at a cocktail party. There's there's a little bit of everything that you can do. We're um, in deep development on this new version of Icons. We had a, a meeting with a financier last week and we are moving forward with it as quickly as possible. So. Um, that is not a dead project. We're still working on it, and hopefully we'll be able to release it to the public. It'll probably be around the time where everybody has VR in your glasses, uh, which I hear rumors of Apple having those out soon in the next year, maybe, but we'll see. Amazing. It's awesome when to see a project like, I mean, this is pretty standard. You know, you hear about these projects that hit and they've been in the works for 10 years, you know, it's one of the things that we want to remind you, like, if you haven't heard about a project for a little bit of time, it's not because we're not working on it. It's, you know, some, like a lot of these projects, you know, they take years to develop, but this one, I'm really excited about, about this one. I think it's, uh, it's amazing that some of the new, new interest in it. So fingers yeah. crossed. So there are a lot of other projects that we're currently working on. Um, and just to let everybody know, we're working on them aggressively. They're all in active development. We're putting writers on or talent on. We're pitching. We're talking to financiers. Um, if you haven't heard about it in a while, it's probably because we're in the middle of that process. We're usually not allowed um, when we're pitching things to talk about it too much because it, it could affect the sales process. But know that we're working on everything, and I'm happy to answer individual questions if you'd like. Sorry, awesome. Paul, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, that's great. Thank you, Terry. All right. Now, the next part of our show here is the uh, Conspicuous Valor Awards. Uh, as a reminder, these are awards that we give out to Legion M members and investors that go above and beyond. Uh, oftentimes, they're very, very supportive and helpful in you know, helping us at Comic-Con or with Film Scout. Um, and I also want to just highlight Diane uh, Reed's um, comment here, what excites her the most about uh, Legion M, the innovative nature of the platform. And so, you know, it, it kind of is, is what, what we're all about, is creating this platform that we're all a part of. It's a community and a, and a platform. And um, yeah, there's so many possibilities. So the first one, drum roll, please. Jeff, did you want to speak to this one? Yes, sorry, I, I I didn't realize the order, but so this yeah. is uh, John. Look at those quads, Grievous, and uh, John. When we say look at those quads, we're not talking about your quad. I'm not talking about your quadriceps. Maybe other people are talking about your quadriceps. You are because you I'm changed it. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the fact that you are one of two quad elite scouts on the planet. Uh, uh, John Grievous and John Biscardi, who uh, a fellow Valor Award winner, um, I have four times competed in a Film Scout film festival and finished in the top 5%, which is the, 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 the litmus for being declared an elite scout. And so, you know, once you can get lucky, twice might be a coincidence, but when you get up to three and four times, uh, it's clear that there's something there. And, you know, we love this. We To us, this is what Film Scout was all about. It's about this idea that everybody has um, uh, opinions, but 
some people ostensibly are probably better at picking uh, and predicting what the large group will think. And who knows where that person is and if they ever got the chance uh, to do it. And we're so excited to continue the Film Scout program. We're so excited. John, one of the other great things with John is, uh, you know, a lot of the elite scouts uh, and more and more of you as we move forward, because we're really expanding that program, uh, get the opportunity to watch screeners and films that Legion M may get involved with uh, because they are, have proven that they are good at predicting what the large group is going to think. Uh, we really value their, their opinions. And, and John has been uh, very conscientious uh, and hard work at watching his screeners and providing uh, timely, valuable, insightful feedback. So, John, welcome to the Valor Award Club, and uh, thank you for all of your hard work. Yay! Congratulations, John. Good job, John. You're like a sommelier for film. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh, we need to come up with a cool name like that. All right, next up, Valor Award. You ready? Bam. Bam. Woohoo, Jeff Hoagland. I can jump in on Jeff Hoagland. Um, so am I, can you guys hear me by the way? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, real quick on Jeff Hoagland, we, our first time to the Chicago Comic-Con, I, for, I, I forget what it's even called anymore. It was so long ago, it feels like. E2, E2. E2, yeah. Two, and two, so, I, I, we, you know, we were looking for volunteers and Jeff Hoagland came running and uh, we met him for the first time in person uh, at, in Chicago and holy, insert a uh, cuss word, he was amazing. This guy, I, I could, we couldn't be more blown away by, by Jeff Hoagland and, and how he helped us out on that con. I wish we had him at every con. He was just amazing and, and just selling Legion. He speaks about Legion. I'm great. He, he helped us so much at the booth and, and what a great, uh, you know, voice uh, coming from our community uh, to help us out. I wish we had him at every con. But, but yeah, congratulations, Jeff Hoagland. Um, we could, like, it was very easy uh, choosing you as one of our Valor Award winners. Yeah, definitely. Yay! Jeff. Woo! Yay! Hey, Jeff. I have a fun Good story. Job, I have a fun story about Jeff from C2E2. Uh, first of all, if there's anybody you want to spend, you know, hours behind a, a desk with, it's Jeff. Uh, great stories, great guy. Um, and it was at the end of C2E2 this year uh, where, you know, three days of con, you're pretty worn out by the end and uh we're, we're packing up the palette together and uh i i'm looking for my phone and i'm like i can't find my phone where is my phone and jeff's like i'll call it and he calls it and we hear the palette that has been wrapped start to buzz <laughs> <laughs> oh that's my awesome. god i almost totally shipped my head. phone back to uh our 3pl <laughs> in the palette <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he was like we'll never tell anybody about this and i was like <laughs> <laughs> okay so i guess technically i'm breaking silence on the story at this point but honestly i would have never that's found awesome. it without him so thank you jeff <laughs> uh, so that's my that's my story well congratulations jeff congrats, it's nice jeff. to have a, a fellow chicagoan as a valor <laughs> award recipient um so all the valor awards will get a uh, get a pin in the honor of of being a legion m um, valor award recipient thank you bragging rights Bragging rights. All right, so now we're going to dive into frequently asked questions. Um, we, you know, before we did this, we uh, invited our community to ask us, you know, what what questions do you want answered? Um, by the way, if, if I know we've already been going for over an hour, so if if you're not interested in hearing the answers to the questions, feel free to questions and hard stop um, at some point. I'll kind of you know, if you if you want to answer it, uh, go for it. Otherwise, I might call on you. So, Terry, I think this first one is kind of an obvious one for you. How do I submit scripts and work to Legion M? Yeah. So I, I did see a lot of questions posted where people have emailed team at legionm.com and they've been put on our um, list to be notified for future submissions. Uh, we simply don't have the amount of staff we would need to read every single person's submission. However, I always caveat that by saying if, if you would like to email 
David or myself and make an introduction about what you're hoping to do and what you're working on and just spend a little time educating us about you. Um, more often than not, we say, please send us your story.